I'm showing a portrait format, anamorphic, 35 millimeter film called film. Well, 35 millimeter is the traditional format of, of cinema. Um, anamorphic, which is the same as Cinemascope, the Cinemascope was a brand name. And so it was uh, the medium or the format used in westerns and huge landscape projects. And what it was is the film is the same, but it's about the lenses. So you would film with an anamorphic or a Cinemascope lens and it would push all the information into one frame so everyone looked very strung out. And then you would project it, putting another anamorphic, and it would pull it out and you'd have this beautiful wide format, you know, landscape format image, beautiful proportions. And I worked out because I'd been making anamorphic films on 16 millimeters since 96, in fact 1996, that if you turn the lens 90 degrees, instead of going, pulling the frame left to right, I could actually pull it up top to bottom and therefore I could make a portrait format image. Um, you know, and so that's, I, I realized that in, immediately when I first visited the turbine hall. And I thought, yes, portrait. I'm going to make a portrait format, 35 millimeter film. Well, you know, when I showed it in the turbine hall, uh, the one question I was asked the whole time, of course, was, uh, why can't that be digital? <laughs> what, you know? uh, it's a very ignorant question, but people ask it. Um, it, and the, what my answer is, it could never have been digital. It would never have been made digitally because it's all about what was possible with a medium and, and as well as what's difficult with a medium. You know, all the things that made, that, that went into the invention of film are because of the constraints of film. You know, you wouldn't need to worry about aperture gate masking, you wouldn't need to worry about the emulsion or the frame or the, the lenses or the turning. You would ne it would never have existed in a digital medium because it was all about what constitutes film. Well, film was originally commissioned and made for Tate Modern's turbine hall. And, um, and now it's going to be, I'm very excited that it's actually going to be shown again in the film museum in Amsterdam. It was also shown again in um, Australia and Korea but it's nice that it's getting shown outside of its very specific context, which was the turbine hall. I had the basic idea that I wanted it to be portrait format and about film, but it took me a while to work out quite how to do it. And in a sense, it is also a portrait format film about the turbine hall because that space was very particular. It had this very distinct east wall. And for a while I thought, well, um, why don't I film inside the turbine hall? And then I realized, of course, you know, this is film, this is artifice. I could bring the turbine hall into my world. So I did it all with backdrops. So that means that east wall had a very, very specific kind of um, impact on the on the film so the the um, you have to remember this was shown I think it was like um, 13 meters high this screen so and it was a freestanding thing so it almost replaced the the wall in an illusory way so it was like bringing things into the turbine hall as an illusion in a way inside the the, the world of film so um, for example you know, once you had the sprockets, then, then I had the, the, I kind of colored with just using basic tints, you know, filters over the lens. You know, all the parts of that wall, you know, there were eight different sections and I hand colored, you know, not hand colored, but I, you know, recolored with a different colored filters, all the different sections of that. So that was a very obvious thing to do. And that grid structure um, dominated many things. So it, you know, it looked at times a bit like a Mondrian. So I, you know, we made a Mondrian out of it. Um, I would also, I wanted to bring things into the space like lightning or putting a light bulb there or a, a window to the outside. And as soon as, you know, I developed this gate masking system, the world was my oyster. I could do anything inside the turbine hall. You know, we, 
the and um, you know we could bring in dry ice we could bring in you know it was all illusory it was amazing I mean actually had I had more time I could have done lots more things but the most and an important part about film actually there are many important things about it but one of them is that it's actually made up of in three sections so it's color section which includes black and white negative that's been that's become color but then there is a pure black and white section and then there's a hand tinted section and um, so it, and these are actually cut together in the film print because I really wanted because what happens if you shoot on black and white and color is that you have to the, make one negative and that means that it's actually um, you're showing black and white on color but I really wanted to project black and white so it's actually in three parts that's cut together. It's quite a complex work, for sure. And then the other important thing is the uh, Mount Analog, which is this uh, mount, it's this actually blackboard drawing that I did of a mountain. Um, a Mount Analog was about, from this René Dumas novel, all about embarking on an impossible project in order to try and find this place. And you have to remember, this is 2011. 2011 really was the beginning of a huge, absolutely mortal threat to the medium. So we also made a book um, with 81 um, contributors, filmmakers, film directors, writers, artists, filmmakers, um, you know, even Neil Young writing about the importance of analog in a digital age. You know, my whole thing is that we, you know, it's two, they are such different mediums. Why did one have to replace the other? Why couldn't they coex co coexist? And that film is a medium. It's not merely a technology. And what happened, and it, of course it was deliberate, you know, putting it in this technological deterministic framework that, you know, because it's a technology, it is destined to become obsolete. And it was hard to wrench the medium of film and f f photographic f film as well out of that, you know, inevitable slide to oblivion. And, you know, it was heartbreaking, the speed with which, the cynical speed with which that happened. So, you know, I then, since 2011, actually, it was m February 2011 when my lab in London closed. I wrote an article for The Guardian about you know the threat to 16 millimeter, but within months it was a threat to all film. I, I have had to become an activist. I, I'm in a reluctant one because of you know it's not necessarily what I would like to spend my time doing, but I had to save this medium that all my work was made on, or a large part of it. And, um, and I had to save it for the world, and, and it just seemed to be disappearing. And so, but there were these very important people who were fighting for it too. And it was just a bit of, about, you know, getting them together. Christopher Nolan, who's a you know, total hero for what he's done in trying to, to protect film. And now Kodak are, have become, have been re-energized and are now back, you know, with fighting for it too for their medium they made it they created it and now they're now they are fighting for it but there was a period when they even they looked like it, it was going to disappear but this the truth is that a lot of people weren't even aware of how quickly we were losing it and then there was all this you know deliberate sort of obfuscation of things and I mean there's these are there are three things that film is a medium and then this medium specificity is that a museum has a duty of care to show a work in the medium it was made. And this is, you know, no one would question that with painting or any other, or sculpture. No one would put in a facsimile of a Van Gogh, for example. But, you know, everyone is gaily putting in um, film, you know, digital facsimiles of films. It's so important to keep that experience. I understand that the multiplexes have gone to digital. Of course, it's an entire, it's a functional, cheaper, me, you know, technology in that situation. 
But it's, you know, artists can make works differently on film than they would do digitally. And it's so important that that's understood, and it, it really wasn't. And the other of the, th of the three thing is um, material resistance or medium resistance. You know, film resists you. Film means that you make something differently because it, it as a medium, it, 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 it's, it def you know, it's a, like a kind of confrontation, as it were. So very, very often, you know, the medium will do something that I do not intend. And I think that lack of, of kind of deliberation is really fundamental. Anybody who works with, even with paint or even chalk here, you know, suddenly the chalk will do something that I didn't intend, but I, I actually liked. And, you know, even Francis Bacon talks about how the paint, you know, would do something and then it would lead him in a different direction, you know. And that's so important. That's letting your material, letting your medium do something. Now, the, I'd say that one of the big issues with digital is that it's, it's too open. You can just see it the whole time. And that has huge advantages for documentation, for documentary, for the news, but not if it comes to poetry, where actually a slight lack of control is quite important. So if you believe in this like, magic underworld, you know, photochemical is is your medium. I mean, film is about chemistry, lenses, and light. So that means that there's always an element of uh, mystery in making a film. You can't see what you're doing. And for me, that's a big difference between film and digital digital you can see what you're doing so you're all knowing and uh, I prefer a bit of blindness because things happen between when the film when you make it you shoot it and then it is it goes it disappears and then things happen in your imagination and then you see it but you've traveled a journey whereas that's that experience has gone and I, I think any if you speak to any filmmaker or artist that's quite a profound moment of how it's working in your head the film was entirely filmed inside the camera. So um, with this aperture gate masking system, which meant that I could mask out, like stenciling, aspects of the f emulsion in a single frame and, um, and film like the top left-hand corner and then rewind the whole film, block out the top left-hand corner and film another part. And that meant that sometimes the film went through the camera, you know, 12 times and also you know that was going on inside the camera and then um, in the film studio I would have um, backdrop of the turbine hall I would have a glass map painting for example of Mount Analog or the lightning which means a, a drawing for example the blackboard drawing of the mountain on the glass then I would have dry ice in the foreground. I mean, there was layers of illusion, not only inside the camera, but inside the space or inside of what was filmed. That meant, but it was all done that moment. There was no recourse later to, you know, to interfering with it. It was all made inside at that very moment, and that's a fundamental of film. Film catches the image at that moment. It's not a template digital. It's the image that you will show. Film is, I think, I, I think if I remember, it's like 23 layers of emulsion or something. So it means that it has, has depth. And the one thing I really feel when I see film projected as opposed to a DCP is that depth. It's mysterious, but it's totally there. It has this incredible depth, even within the slither of light that it, that it is. You know, there's, it's, it's a, a lot of the things are slightly unquantifiable about why film has this internal beauty, but it has it. And it could be the layers of emulsion, it could be the grain, the movement of the grain. Every film frame is different, like a snowflake. You know, um, so film is also, for me, um, about time, which is, is a big difference between film and digital. So you know, with a 16 millimeter, 400 foot, you have 10 minutes. You know, with uh, a, um, you know, a smaller 
magazine or a, a roll of film, it's just three minutes or 35, five minutes. So um, it's always about time. So you make a lot of decisions. So it's an incredibly decisive movie. You have to worry about, you know, light. You have to worry about exposure. You have to worry about, uh, you know, sound. <laughs> <laughs> you have to worry about light. You have to worry about exposure. You have to worry about um, time, you know, how much you've got. F and then you run out. And that creates editing, actually. Editing as artifice, editing as a, a as a means of creating something out of things that don't quite fit, which makes it an art. It's very very important editing. Editing comes out of the fact that film isn't quite long enough. You know, it it, it runs out, and that's fundamental because it makes you think about. You know, here you can record me for forty minutes, and you don't need to worry unless you have other. But the the fact that film. It's, there's an internal discipline to film, which relates to time, which relates to light, rel which relates to the invisibility of, or the blindness of it. All these things make a different work of art than a, that had you done the same thing digitally, because there are things going on that you don't or can't completely control. And another thing that's really important to me is that um, film is basically a silent medium. You know, you're recording me here with, t with sound. You know, image comes with sound. Your action is taking the image off the sound, off the sound, off the image. Whereas film, you know, you're recording sound separately and you watch your sound mute and th then you add the sound. But in that, in that whole thing is a whole area of, of creative potential. So, you know, there's so many reasons. I mean, I could go on for hours about the differences between <laughs> film and digital. And I mean, they're totally there.